How you doing, chemistry fans? Today we're going to take a look at a little bit to deal with the gas laws. Uh, I don't know about you, but I actually teach the gas laws fairly early in the fall. And one of the classic demonstrations involves a vacuum pump uh, and a bell jar and a balloon. We uh, put the balloon in the bell jar and we cover the uh, little hole that's here on the plate with some sort of a beaker. It's got an opening so the air can still be pulled out because you do not want to pull the balloon into the orifice here. That's a bad thing when you have to go to your department head and say, look, I've just sucked a balloon down into the vacuum pump. It no longer works. Can you pop for another three or $400 for one? So then I, I show this to the students and I ask, okay, you've read a little bit about the gas laws last night. Make a prediction as to what's going to happen when I pump the air out of here. So we're gonna pump it out of here. All right, we're gonna turn this on and make a prediction in your own mind what's going to happen. Think about it. I want you, did you hear that? There wasn't much of a sound. All you heard was a little pinging action. The reason there's no sound is we've removed the air from inside here. The pinging you hear is literally the bell jar as the balloon hits it. So let me let the air back in. Well, that's kind of cool. And then as the balloon hits this, you get that pinging kind of a bell shape, a bell sound. So I show my students this. We talk about the fact that this is really a nice example of something called Boyle's Law. Pressure is inversely proportional to the volume. As the pressure goes down, the volume goes up of the balloon until it ruptures. Now, of course, then my students ask me, they say, well, you know, what would happen if I put my lab partner in there? And I go, you know, I don't, really don't have a bell jar big enough to fit your lab partner, but maybe we can, I don't know, put something like a bunny in there, you know, later in the year if, if, if you're good. And about half the class is going, that man is sick. And the other half are going, do it, do it. So then we kind of don't do much with the gas laws for a while. And I don't know about your students, but maybe around spring break, if I ask them about the gas laws, many of mine seem to have forgotten it. Now I know yours are probably much better than mine. They have all those gas laws in their mind all year, but some of mine tend to forget it. So the day before spring break, or what we used to call Easter break, I say, you know, I was out cutting my lawn for the first time and I came across a bunny. Remember when I said I'd put the bunny in the, in the vacuum pump with the bell jar? And they're going, that's sick. And again, 50%, do it, do it. So you come out with a little box with some air holes and some grass in there, and you're thumping the bottom like Peter Cottontail, but this time you bring out of the box a marshmallow bunny. So many of the students are relieved, others are kind of depressed because it's not a real bunny. But uh, So you open it up, and this really has a lot of air in it, as you realize. Uh, uh. And we're gonna open up one of these other ones, and for a while, I was kind of depressed because they didn't used to make the big ones. They used to make only the small ones for a number of years, but these have come back. So we're gonna do the experiment. Whoa, this one's looking good. That one is looking very good. As you can see, there's a little bit of filling in this one. So the important thing here is cover this orifice with something. Otherwise, you're gonna suck the bunny in the vacuum pump and then when you go to your administrator and say, I've just sucked a bunny down the vacuum pump and it no longer works, that's not gonna bode well for your career because they're expensive. And then trying to explain what you were doing. So I put this in there and I say, okay, now do you remember the gas laws and what's going to be going on here? So I try to get the kids to remember Boyle's Law, which is sometimes like pulling teeth. Um, and see if they can elicit a response from them to see if they can tell me what's going on. Now keep in mind, this, these bunnies are filled with lots of air. There's air pockets trapped in there. We're gonna pull a vacuum on that and we're gonna see what happens. Are you guys ready? I think so. I don't like this place. It looks like it lacks atmosphere. I don't think these guys care it for it, but we're gonna do this. We're gonna do what's called a hair raising experience. So I'm gonna turn on the vacuum pump. Okay, we're going to close the valve, and we're going to see what happens. Oh, no! I feel swell! As we in decrease the pressure, we increase the volume rather dramatically with this one. 
where we're really creaming this guy over here, aren't we? Okay. Now, at a certain point in time, we begin to rupture the air cells. So we're actually pulling the air away. So those cells are breaking down. So the bunny begins to shrink back. Now, we're going to turn off the pump. And we're going to let the air in slowly because, you know, we don't want to hurt these bunnies any more than they've already been hurt. <laughs> oh, I feel depressed. Because if you think about it now, you're increasing the pressure. We've removed the air from the little pockets. So these guys have shrunk in size. Now, for some reason, some students will want to eat these. I would never do that. Here you go, Irene. 